I'm going to stay ready so I don't have to get ready, bro, if it ever came to that point. All I could do is worry about now, take advantage of what I got the best of it. I can't work at the end of the road. It's even to end at the road point. Anybody that's worrying about, you know, if if, if that's going to come down the line, you looking too far ahead and not worrying about what's in front of you right now. That's how I look at it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Mac Life in the building. <laughs> my man, my man said in the comment session that he want to jump on this train that we're on right now. Controversial company, Super Eagle. We got different opinions, I, I should say, about the controversial company. Some good, some okay, other times bad. But here you come into the midst and you want to add your story to the pot. So my man, thank you for joining me. I do appreciate you coming in and sitting down with me and uh, sharing your story. What do you have to add to the stories of controversial company, Super Eagle? I'll tell you what, man. I was in the shadows for a little bit. I was hearing the ups and downs. If he stay, stay steady, Man, I need to jump in this party, man. It, it, it ain't mixed up. Sure enough, everybody is entitled to the owner. Everybody got a story to tell, you know, after they came through here for Super Eagle. The story I got to tell, they legit. I'm not covering up for nobody. I'm telling it like it is, good and bad. And I'm, I'm, I'm just here to say, man, everybody that comes through here that got something to say for me, you know, tell the truth. Don't just bash what the company did. Tell what you did and what you and if y'all got proof about what y'all said, Super Ego doing, where's the proof? If you ain't got no proof, come on, man, keep it pushing. You know, wish you well and you know, in your future endeavors with you know, the next company that you join. But come over here talking about the company, man. Get your story together. Uh, okay, Mac Life. Okay, okay. But but why why take up for a company that you, that is kind of lightweight doing dirt to the drivers? Why come to their defense? I don't want to say I'm coming to Super Ego defense. I'm coming to the defense of the drivers that's here, that found the system, that made it work for them, and is out here actually making decent money, the good money with this company. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not on here to uh, 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 throw a cape on and try to save the company because it don't work for everybody. You know, everybody don't come over here with the right mindset. Everybody don't come over here, you know, knowing that this is a business that you're getting ready to partake in. This is a truck that you're trying to buy. And you're going to have up and down weeks. You're not going to have a great week. You're not going to get fed with a silver spoon. These guys is not going to hold your hand. They're not going to baby you for one. You know, they give you some tools to be successful if you come with a blueprint, if you come with a plan. you got to have a plan. You know, you can't just come over here and think that they're going to roll the red carpet out for you from start to finish. It's not going to be like that at all, by no means. So I'm coming, I'm coming to fence for all the guys that's actually making it over here, man. I can't tell you how many videos I've done showing proof that I'm making it. And one thing I heard you say in one of your previous videos is, damn if you do, damn if you don't. I get the same thing. Whether I show proof or not, it's always somebody out there with a negative comment talking about put it on the glass, show this and show that. And if I'm showing you, why are you still running your mouth if I'm you time after time? If I'm still here going on nine months now, almost a year, what more do I need to say? So it's like, you know what? From here on out, the videos that I've decided to make and put on YouTube was videos showing any driver that came here that had a doubt, that had a question. Let me let me let me share my blueprint with you and see if it works for you, see if it makes sense for you. Okay, okay, okay. All right, Mac Life. All right. Again, I appreciate you coming in here, drop, drop dropping the drip and dropping the juice. Okay. But my man, out of everybody that came through controversial company Super Ego, good and bad, right? More bad than good though. But why you, my man? Why why do you need to prove anything though? If you're doing good because if if you follow me, you you heard me in some instances, some way that I said if P 
people is doing good over there they ain't gonna come out and share their secret sauce they just gonna go ahead stay in the background do what they doing and continue to make their money why, why do you feel that you want to come out and share anything if you're doing good bro why you want to be the one to come out there and share it i'm not afraid to speak up i'm not afraid to jump in the middle of the crowd and and and, and get this thing going i'm not afraid to say what it is what it's not, what it can be, what it won't be. I'm not afraid of no backlash. I'm not afraid of no, 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 nobody's opinion because nobody opinion dictates my reality. Yes, I'm making it over here and showing proof was a point that I wanted to make while being over here because, like you said, yeah, it's always more negative comments than anything with this company. And I always felt like if I could be some type of a fixed object or a light that any other driver can see. If 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 what I'm saying can help them, if what I'm saying and you know they they add it to the equation and they can turn things around for themselves, I should be ego. Then by all means, I'm gonna speak up because not enough of us that is making it will speak up. And I know some guys that's been here way longer than I have that won't speak up. I'm not them. I'm different. I don't mind voicing my opinion. I don't mind putting my voice on social media or on any platform just because I'm a truck driver. I want you to know what's up, whether it's good or bad. And you make your decision at the end. Okay. Money off the top. You got proof. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you manage it, you feel right. You are in the right areas. And you, you, you're making that sacrifice. There's no reason why you can't make it over here. So I'm going to speak on that because you can make it over here regardless of what people are hearing or not. Now, I'm going to have to agree. I, I, I know people personally that is making it over there, uh, but they're doing it their own kind of way. But let me ask you this before we continue. Yeah. Are you getting paid, bro? Or did they bring you in the back room and say, hey, we got you. Look at this cash right here. Did, did they dangle that in front of you, my guy? Did you accept it? Let me tell you something. I could count on one hand how many times I've been to the yard in Elmhurst, and not once have I ever been taking that no back room and nothing's been dangling in front of my face and no contracts been put on the desk in front of me. Nothing. Anytime I come there for a reason. I come to speak to the classes that uh, Cooking in the Hammer Lane got, or I'm picking up more packs. I'm going by my business. And if I cross somebody that's actually watched my channel, I top it up with them, give them any type of advice, answer any type of questions, I get on by my business, right? But no, to answer your question, no. I ain't got no type of offers, no nothing dangling in my face, no, no, no nothing. I ain't going for it. Okay. Okay, okay, Mac Life in the building, okay. All right, my man, so... With that said, you just mentioned a few seconds ago that you go back and forth to Amherst. Amherst? I'm pronouncing that right? Amherst? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amherst. Oh, okay. Yeah. You go back and forth to Amherst. Have there been any drivers, disgruntled or otherwise, that you had cross paths with and they, they kind of told you, hey, this ain't working out for me or anything like that. Was there anybody that you have seen that, that left in turmoil or anything or anybody that you have seen that you pull to the side and say, hey, try it this way? You know what I'm saying? Or try to change their mind about the company? I got a, I got a good one for you. All right. My first night uh, coming to Super Ego, my first night, got there Wednesday night, got there a little late, uh, drove my personal car. Before I could even set foot out the door, yo, you, 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 you coming to see where you go? Yeah, man, if I was you, man, I'm in here. I ain't got no checks. Oh, yeah? Damn, bro. How long you been driving trucks? Been about 10 to 11 years. Oh, yeah? I'm definitely not trying to hear what you're saying because if you've been here three weeks, you ain't got no check, and you got 10 to 11 years under your belt. You know, I came back the next day, finished everything in one shot. Went to recover a truck. Went to Ohio to recover my first truck. Where? Oh. He told me he'd been here for three weeks, hadn't seen the check. I'm like, okay, how long you been driving? Um, I've been driving 10, 11 years. All right, so me adding up. I ain't went here no more. So I went on to find out myself. And the only reason I go to find out myself is because, like, my grandmother used to tell me, you want to find out if something is real, go read it for yourself. Go open the book and read it for yourself. So I made that step. Came in, finished my orientation the next day, which was Thursday. Went to recover my truck in Ohio. They pay you the thousand dollars, but it's 
it's on a scale. It depends on how far you go out to where uh, they give you that thousand dollars, and they pay it out in uh, increments of five hundred. You know, once you do one load, the yeah. CFS code and whatnot. Luckily for me, I'm saying luckily for me because I've heard the stories. You know, people going to recover trucks and they look like shit. My truck was in good condition. Wasn't nothing wrong with it. I did my little wipe down because, like I preach, can't nobody clean a truck like you clean the inside of your truck. You know what I'm saying I've heard other people around the yard, you know, say, "Oh, I ain't getting no loads. All oh, my dispatch is this, my dispatch is that." Okay, man, listen, I've been trucking long enough to know every dispatch ain't perfect, and every dispatch can't do their job. I've, I've, I've been in them shoes, you know. And that's, that's a big factor, you know, not just being with Super Eagle Board, but being, being with any company, that's a major factor. Is your dispatch good at what they run you the way you need to be ran? You know, is your truck going the way you want it to move? And if you don't have a good dispatch, that's going to put you in a tight spot, yes. But if you don't exhaust all your options as far as the dispatch goes, and you got to move to the next one, that's so be it. Because at the end of the day, you making that truck, you know, Every week, you making the fixed costs and the monthly costs and, you know, the, 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 the scrolls and the register. You got to take care of that and you got to take care of your family at home. So it, it comes down to, you know, you having that plan and you having, you know, a, a good established relationship with your dispatch. If you trying to make it over here, I mean, this ain't time. This ain't, you know, any other major company with, with a lease program and, you know, they may give you better tools. Um, as far as making it out here, but the industry itself is not where it used to be. Be so that that goes to show that you got to put a little more oomph into your hustle and being out here. It's just it with Super Eagle because the language barrier is off. It's not all the way there. You got to make some adjustments. You got to adapt. And if you can't adapt to your environment, especially being at Super Eagle, you're also not going to make it. Okay, Mac Life. All right. All right. So. Recovering the trucks. I, I, I tipped on that a few times. Mm-hmm. You you come over to the controversial company, Super Eagle. They put you in a, in a lease agreement. But here's a lease agreement on a truck that was somebody else's. Why not just put you in a lease agreement on a truck that's like new in the yard? That's what they're promoting on their social media. Brand new 2024, 2023, 2025 trucks. But you get over there and and you got to go and recover the truck that you're leasing. You're leasing somebody else's problems, bro. Luckily for you, you, the truck that you recovered, it was on point. You recovered it from Ohio. But for other people that's coming in, why tell them or why even offer them to be like, well, yeah, if you just go and get your own truck, yada, 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 you're, you're good to go. But but those trucks do turn out to be pieces of S, though, bro. That's cool. Um, I'm going to speak on what I know. And I can't speak on everything because I don't know everything. Facts. But Go ahead. They do have trucks at the yard that's good and bad. They do got trucks that you go and recover that's good and bad. They do got trucks that's brand new if you got $5,000 to put down on. A lot of guys, females that come over here, don't want to have that five thousand dollars to get in a brand new truck that ain't never been driven at all. Another thing I look at, or another thing I like to speak on, is okay, going to recover a truck, sign a lease, like you said, picking up somebody else's problem. That was written. You know what I'm saying? We don't have no control over that. I mean, I can't speak on you know what they advertise because. I'm not part of that advertisement. I didn't jump in there and say, hey, you know, if you come over here and get this and got that, we got this over here. Oh, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't I don't want no parts to that because I don't want to be tied in to, uh, uh, how you say, uh, a false statement. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have had the company reach out to me and ask me about, you know, certain ideas on how to, you know, make the company better. And, that could very well be one of them, you know, back up what you say. If you say guys can come over here and get in brand new truck, zero down payment, then let it be known. You know what I'm saying? Because whether we like it or not, you get over there, you're going to see one thing, you're going to hear another, you're going to get put into a situation that you don't want to be in. And at the end of the day, you don't have to sign on no dotted line. You don't have to sign and agree, oh, I'm going to go take that truck. They're not forcing no truck on you. This is what the truck looked like. 
If it's on the yard, they go out there with you. You check it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, move on to the next. There are things that can be worked on with the company itself, but that's what any company, any company. I've heard all the stories about different other companies. Yeah, you may hear more about Super Eagle because they 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 fall and they 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 get out a little differently. That's just like them coming over here and having to adapt to our ways. And they probably looked at us like, man, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. I don't understand what he's saying. But they over here, they making it the best way they know how. So we got to do the same thing. You got you got too many you got too many mamas, boys. You got too many people that come over here with that milk still on their tongues and not ready to jump into the game and don't have a clue what game they jumping into. And when it don't go their way, blah, 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 they want to scream and yell and shout and not tell what they did. Like, oh, man, and all, and all like that. The consensus you, you just mentioned, well, drivers are walking up out of there and they only been there for like three weeks, four weeks, and that's pretty much the consensus that's been that's been going on as of late. I, I get a lot of drivers in the background reaching out to me, and that first thing I ask them, how long you been with them? Oh, man, I only been with them for like three weeks. Like, you kind of figure, and I, 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 I ask why give them the benefit of the doubt. I, I give them the little bit of the doubt because right, right. in the first couple of weeks, you're not going to make no money. I, at least that's what I come to grasp. Now, maybe I might be wrong, but I, I grasp the fact that you guys is not going to make no money in the first couple of weeks. It's, it's a it's a building process, in my opinion. Once you sign on the dotted line, depending on whatever fuel that you get, depending on whatever loads that you get, they're they going to come back and, and get their money. If they pay for your Uber, they pay for your hotel stay, they pay for your airplane ticket, they're going to take all that out in the first couple of paychecks. So for the first couple of weeks, yeah. But then the consensus also out there that's floating as well is that they don't get paid at all. And that's where I come into play. Like maybe the first week, I'll even push it to the second week, but the third week, bro, and you still here? Why? Why? That's that's like I, I don't know. That's insanity to me, bro. Let me let me let me let me take some action faster to you, bro. Okay, so my first week here, you know, like I explained, you know, I got everything. I went back home because it was on the way there. I stayed in Indiana, so went back home, regrouped, got everything that I needed, and drove to Ohio to the truck. Right, got there, cleaned the truck up. I didn't get there till Friday evening. Clean the truck. I got the truck comfortable how I wanted it to be. Uh, dispatch called me Saturday. Hey, it's the week. Hello. Went to go pick up the load in Ohio. The only thing for me was I couldn't get the load till Sunday morning, but they allowed me to drop my trailer to get preloaded. Okay. Pick that load up. That load, I picked it up Sunday morning. That load delivered Monday morning in Joliet. I turned that load in, delivered it. That, that Friday coming up, I got a check. It might have been a low check. It was only $100. But the fact is, I got a check off of one load. I did one load that week, and I got a check. So that 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 right there just crossed out dude telling me, well, I've been here three weeks, and I ain't got a check. How is that? Well, I did one load and got a check. You know, make it make sense. And a lot of these guys ain't making it make sense because they ain't telling you everything. It's just like you got a brother, you got a sister. Y'all go out, y'all get in trouble. Your brother or sister tell what you did but won't tell what they did. It don't work like that. Do you get paid over here? Yes, you get paid. And the company will tell you. I've had my payroll lady tell me Super Eagle has from Friday to Monday to pay you. I've gotten paid Thursday evenings. I've gotten paid Friday mornings before I woke up. I've got paid Sunday evenings. But at the end of the day, I've gotten paid. Anybody knows in their right mind, anybody that's a driver, whether they here or at another company, you know how we get out, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, Joe Trucks, we all turn into accountants when it comes to our pay. We want to know what's up, where I pay at, what's going on. I can win, I ain't get my, 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 my check stub or whatever. I can vouch for the company and say, yes, they do pay you. These other guys that saying they're not getting paid or a young lady saying they're not getting paid, I can't speak on that because I don't know what they doing or what they not doing. But the company tells you in orientation, you got your tax. Turn your tax in 
before 6 p.m. Monday evening. I can and add on to that and say, you can actually turn your tech packs in Tuesday and still get paid because I've done it. I do it all the time. I just did it this week. And guess what? I got paid 4 o'clock this morning. I was talking about that. I need to tell the whole story and why they're not getting paid or why they text is in the negative. It's it's more to it. It's always more to it. That's how I see it. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Mac Life, man. Listen, again, I, I do appreciate you coming on, sharing your stories, talking your experience with controversial company Super Eagle. But I, I got some questions from, from the comment session and, and some questions from some of the subscribers. Uh, one question in particular is, how are you booking loads off the low board or off of any low board because Super Eagle don't allow that. They have their own low boards that you that you should be picking from. But how are you picking from outside of the out, outside of the family? I don't pick from nothing, bro. I don't even look at that low board. The fact that I have a disc that's experienced in this game, she's proven to me over the months that I can put my trust in her and I can run, make what I want to make, and be able to go home and have something to show for it. Dave's mm-hmm. board at Super Ego is not the greatest, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that off rip because before Super Ego, I was with another company where we did dispatch ourselves and we use DA. It's nothing like DAT. You're not going to see, you know, three, 400 lows or 1,100 lows. You're not going to see it at all. You'd be lucky if you see something that's worthwhile. Don't get me wrong. There are lows on there that do pay. I've seen them. I've seen them firsthand. But do I go on there and book them lows or do I tell anybody else or any other driver that's here to go on there? No. I mean, you want to go on there and look for yourself? Go ahead. But me personally, I don't deal with it at all. I got enough trust and enough confidence in my dispatch to know that she's going to give me a load that makes sense. If it don't make sense, she's not even going to mention it to me. You know, she's, she's ran me week after week, month after month. I've never had a problem with meeting my or uh, 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 being able to, you know, I want to say be the top gross, but I'm in competition with myself. So if I grow 7,000 this week, I'm about to see if I can gross 8,000 or 9,000 or 10,000. And it's been done with one dispatch that I have. And I've only had, I've only had one dispatch. I've been here. I'm not letting it go. But like I said, that's a major key. You know, you having a good dispatch in this game. It's all about the dispatchers, in my opinion. Got to, man. You got to have a good dispatch over here, man. It's all about the dispatchers. Not, I said that for company drivers. Well, you, right. you get that right. one dispatcher that you and that dispatcher get a report. Your time at the company is going to be great. But once that dispatcher is gone and you get switched up with another dispatcher that y'all two is not gelling, then, yeah, yeah, it it's probably might be time for you to look for other opportunities. All right, man. So right. so this dispatcher right here, you got lucky. I mean, is it safe to say that? That you got lucky that you got one of the good blessed, ones? Bro. I've been I've, I've been blessed to have a good one. Um, honestly, when I came here, she was actually my backup dispatch. The dispatch that I came in with, that I initially started with, he went on vacation, had her for two weeks, and she showed me within that two weeks, I need to keep this chick by my side. Whatever I got to do, whoever I got to call, I need to let it be known this is who I want. I ain't doing nothing else. If I don't have her, they have even called me and offered me the refrigerator division. They only offer a refrigerator division to the strongest drivers. And I told them straight up, that's cool. I run refrigerated. But if I ain't got my dispatch, Anna, I don't want it. And she told me straight up. She called me when she found out that they had offered me a uh, refund. She said, I'm no longer in that division because they changing things up. And like I told her, if I can't have you, I'm not going nowhere. She said, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to continue to run you the same way. And she ain't been lying ever since, bro. She's been standing on business since I've been here. Okay. 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 That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So the next question is about the Raycon, bro. Being that you speak so highly of, of your female dispatcher, are you able to see the true Raycon of what you're actually making for that load? 
One thing I like about her, he sends me an email of the Raycon. I don't. So I've heard other drivers say, "Oh my, my, my dispatch sends me a text message with the little info." I don't want that. You send me a text message with the little info. You could be telling me anything. I want to see that paper. I know what a Raycon looks like just because I used to book with the brokers myself. So when she sends me my Raycons, I know what to look for and everything. I've compared old Raycons of my last company to Raycons that she sent me, especially dealing with brokers like C.H. Robinson. I know what their Raycons look like. So yes, yeah, she sends me the absolute Raycon. It's never no, this don't look right or this this look like you just put this on a blank piece of paper and send it to me. Nah, I don't, I don't never... I don't never have to question that. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So the percentage, bro. I, I just recently talked to a, a recruiter now that is offering the 2575 and it used to be 8812. Are you grandfathered in with the 8812 or are you with the 7525? Nah, nah. I'm still at 88. So it's 88% of the load and you're actually seeing the real Raycon and everything again like i said you 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 lucked up and got a and, and got a good one i guess I, I, i've been blessed bro that's how i look at it i don't i don't i don't want to say that you know they they saw in favoritism or anything to me or nothing like that um all i can say is i'm blessed bro i mean i've i've had the ups and downs and being in trucking i've been trucking almost 15 years so I've, I've been on the ugly side and the dark side and it just so happened that when I came over here, man, I just, I, I guess I got the, I, I got the long stick. I ain't get caught with the short stick. I, I've been blessed, bro. Okay. I mean, being blessed, I'm just putting it out there. Like, man, whether, whether you blessed or not, you know, you can always, you know, turn, turn your story around. I mean, you can always turn them tables. And if I could do anything to help any job, I don't care who it is. I said in my videos, anybody, you got any type of questions, any type of concern, if I can help, I'm going to put it out there. If I ain't got it, I'm going to see if I can go get it. And if I can't, I'm going to try to point you in that direction to where you get it. And if you get it, let me know. Now, you you just mentioned about favoritism. Do you feel that there is a lot of favoritism being played at a controversial company? Man, bro, it's, it's, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm, I can't speak on if there's favoritism as should be because there's so many drivers. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going on. No, by, by no means. But what I can speak on is if you over here, whether you over here, whether you at Prime, Swift, whoever, yeah, if you got a good dispatch, that's one thing. But you got to do your job as well. So if you're one of them drivers that want to half-ass, don't want to drive, or you late for loads, or you late delivering the load, how you think your dispatch going to look at you compared to three, four, or five other drivers that's actually keeping that left door closed and taking care of the load? Not saying that they're going to show you or show them favoritism, but at the same time, they're going to treat you how you, you know, put yourself out there as a lazy driver and you always late to a pickup or a delivery and you know that's going to make the company look bad. What do you think the company is going to do? They're going to talk to you about it, of course, like, hey, you know what I'm saying, you need to tighten up or whatever. But if you don't tighten up and you complain about you're not making no money, you need to look in the mirror. So I don't really think it's no favoritism. I think it comes down to the driver putting the work in. If you put the work in, you take care of you take care of the customer first and then play around afterwards, then the company gonna take care of you regardless. Now, a driver just recently mentioned that they was able to find a load. A pretty good one, they say. It was a pretty good load. They reached out to their fleet manager or their dispatcher. They say, hey, I got this load right here. Make it happen. They was informed that the quote unquote load wasn't available. And they found out that the load was shifted to somebody else. That's what I was kind of segueing into the favoritism. Like if you was to find a good load for yourself and you'd be like, Hmm. Okay, I found this two thousand or this this twenty five hundred dollar load uh, that's paying like two two fifty a mile. You sent it to your dispatcher, and they supposed to hook it up for you, but they be they'll come back to you and be like, nah, it's not available, and then they'll just give it to their number one or number two. That's what I was getting at as far as the favoritism goes. Uh, nah, bro, I ain't I ain't never. 
the only thing I've heard that happened over here, and if you ask me, it was legit to 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 a sense. Um, one driver I knew had a low paying seventy five hundred going from east to the west, and uh, the area that he was in, he wasn't gonna be able to make it there in time to get the load. So basically, he was gonna lose out on that load. Another driver that was under the same dispatch found out about the load and. They was in the area and they could pick the load up on time when it needed to be picked up. And in return, they actually got the load, but they got it for less. I think they got it for seven. And the driver that actually got the load wasn't even here longer than the other driver. It was based on who's available, who's in the area, who can pick up the load on time when it needed to be. Because the first guy, he won't get there. They won't get to the next day. And they had a driver that was right there in the area. Hey, I'm in the area. I found out about that. But as far as, you know, somebody saying, hey, I found this load and they took it and gave it to another driver. I ain't never heard of that over here. Never. So I, I can't really speak on that. I don't I don't ever see no no favoritism when it comes to that or when it comes to a load on the low board. I don't see it. OK. All right, driver. So fuel. We, we already know the controversy behind the fuel or the fuel cars getting cut off and everything like that. But the question here is they want to know. Do you get a fuel rebate? Because Super Eagle don't give fuel rebates, but they heard you in the video that you do get fuel rebate. Is it is it true? Get fuel rebates. We get fuel rebates. As far as I know, if the company get a discount at Pilot, Flying J's, and Love, we don't get no fuel rebate. I don't. Not that I know of. When I go to, if I go to Pilot and it say four thirty four, that's what I'm paying for four thirty four. But I don't even, I don't, I don't, I don't mess around with the Pilots and Flying J's and all that. I go to all the Mon Pa's because it's the cheapest. But we can only get fifty gallons, you know, with those Mon Pa's. Will they turn your cart off? Hell yeah, they will. But what if I, what, what, what I've experienced with the cars being turned off is. If I'm going home and I'm home two days or more, that car going to turn off because you're not active. Now, another experience I had, couldn't find a load last week. I sat all day. Yes, the car turned off. I ain't going nowhere. I don't have a load on my back. And I sat there all day. So the car turned off. Will they turn the car off when you're going to get a load or you got a load on your back? Man, I ain't never heard of that, man, because I've delivered a load, sent my, my, my trans slow in, went to a truck stop and was able to get fuel. Never had a problem. Okay. Another question is, are you a SAP driver? No, no, I'm not a SAP driver at all. I ain't failed no drug tests. I ain't, uh, and I ain't with none of that. All right. So this question is right here is, why didn't you just buy a truck and lease it on? If you so much about how running the truck, why you just didn't buy a truck straight out and just lease it on to their authority? Why not just buy your own truck from outside and then come and lease it on to them? This is how I look at it, bro. Why I didn't buy a truck and lease it on? I'm not going to sit here and say my my, my uh, credit score is perfect. Or I got an 850 credit score. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I got... 50, 60,000, 100,000 sitting in the bank. No, I don't have any of that. You know what I'm saying? As far as uh, when it comes to buying a truck, because we all know you go to one of these dealerships and try to run your credit and get one of these trucks. They're going to knock your head off. You know what I'm saying? So, no, when I saw Super Ego, they called me a few times. I thought about it. Let me look into it. Okay, zero down. I may be able to get away with a, a decent truck and not have to put no money down. I can do that. I came over here because I wanted a newer truck to be able to run and make the money and save the money to be able to branch off and go get a truck and bring it back. That's my plan. Okay. I didn't have the fifty, sixty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars to put down to go get a truck. And if I did, I never came over here. I would have stayed and got my own authority and either ran power only, you know, using other uh, companies' trailers or whatnot, and did it like that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, my man, come in. my man, my man, ready. Hey, bro, I try. Hey, I, I, I want to be in this party, bro. 
<laughs> no, man. My man Mac Life says he know where he's going. He's ready. Damn, bro. Man, listen. That's, okay. that, that's what I be trying to tell these guys, man. I ain't got no company mindset. It ain't gonna always work like man. It ain't gonna always work the way that you want it to work, bro. My you gotta be able to uh, adapt in any situation, bro. If you can't adapt, if you can't shut up and listen or take notes, it's not gonna work. Cause this this a doggy dog word. This ain't for everybody. For one, you know, you got a lot of guys that want to go home every weekend but don't do what they got to do to go home on the weekends. I'm going to go home every weekend. Uh, you think you're going to have a two, three, four thousand dollar check? No, nah, it don't work like that. You need to go home on the weekend with a load on your back so you can leave out Sunday and deliver that load Monday if you want to stay ahead and not have to play catch up. I, I say, but when I, I'm coming correct, bro, I'm coming correct whether it's good or bad, bro. All right. So listen, man, you did mention about the money making aspect over there a lot of well not a lot but a few people are making money in recovery and a few of them have said that the, the way to make money is to go the recovery route this question for you is is why you just didn't go and do recovery right and again that again it's about getting your own truck or you could have just went recovery and then just used the truck that you're buying from them to run power only for other other brokers or could you do that or could you do that man i don't know nothing about how they doing recovery as far as you know going to get trucks and whatnot i don't know what the pay is like I know what the pay is like, so I can't really speak on that. But me personally, I didn't get in this game to be a recovery driver. If it works for them, hey, by all means, I salute you. I salute him, her, whoever. You know what I'm saying? If it's working for them and that's the route that they want to take or if it's something that they doing temporarily until, you know, the, the, the industry gets better. Hey, cool. I took my hat off to you. You got all my respect, but I didn't get in this game to be no recovery driver. If I wanted to be a recovery driver, I could have went and did that and been a repo man and got a little pickup truck and went and started recovering cars. But that ain't my lane. That ain't that ain't what I chose uh, to do. That's not what I looked at. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I'm a trucker, bro. I'm not a steel holder. You know what I'm saying? I got in this game to travel, to drive to know that the job that I'm doing out here is helping millions of others. I don't care if you know me or not, you know, but if if I'm willing to suck it up and leave home knowing that I may not make it back you know, just to feed you and your family, I look at it like I sacrifice myself. That's the greatest sacrifice in God's eyes. So to be a recovery driver, that just ain't my thing, bro. I ain't got nothing bad to say about it because I don't know about it. And if I don't know about it, I don't speak on it. All right, all right. So another way of making money over there, they say that you have to run. If you're not running, you're not making no money. Just like you said, get the load if you're going home, have a load on your back, deliver it on that Monday so you can stay ahead of the curve. Another way that people say that that money is to be made over there is by, of course, another controversial thing that's going on is resetting the law book. Now, let me ask you this. I got a two-part question for you. Have you allowed them to reset your laws? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. I'm, 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 like I said, bro, good or bad, I'm going to speak on it, bro. I'm going to tell you what I did. Um, I was trying to get home for uh for uh Thanksgiving so I go see my moms or whatnot. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it back in time. You know what I'm saying? To jump in the car, get ready and do all that. So I logged off. I ain't know no better. I logged off and I drove. I had like 45 minutes to get to the house. So I logged off like, man, I'm not getting ready to stop. I'm 45 minutes away from the house and it's the holidays. I need to get on home. They called me and was like, hey, um, we noticed you logged off. Um, we're going to have to fix your clock. You're going to have to do a longer 34 reset. Cool. I ain't complaining. I ain't going to fight with you. I'm calm anyway. And then they told me, well, you don't have to, um, you know, log off if you need a little time that we can uh, we can fix it to where you can have a little time to drive. All right, cool. I didn't know y'all could do that. I didn't know no company could do that. And from what I've been hearing, they ain't the only company doing that. I've heard companies say way worse. You right. got an unlimited right. class. You got this. You got that. And I'm like, what? Where from? I never heard of that until I came over here. Will they do it for you? Yeah. Do I do it? No, because I know how to run. I pick up loads that I can deliver the next day, meaning I'm doing between 
five and 650 mile runs. Lows that I know I can knock out in one drive shift. Me, I'm the type of driver, I'm gonna drive that whole clock out. That whole 11 hours, I'm driving that. I'm gonna get where I gotta get to, even if I don't make it there that same day, you know, to my receiver. If I gotta shut down for 10 hours just to get a fresh clock, cool, I'm gonna do that because my life is way more important than trying to get a clock to reset or get them to reset a clock, get them to give me a fresh clock. Cause what's gonna happen is, just like that one driver with Triton went down the road and got in that bad accident. You know, he, he did all that off a clock that they, that a fresh clock that they gave him. Like, it may make sense to get a fresh clock because you can continue to run. But if something happens, if something goes sideways with the driver and that truck, is the company going to look out for you? Because everything they telling me, even if they do tell you on the phone, it's on a recorded line. You got to you gotta take it upon yourself. You got to ask yourself, does it make sense to do that? Get a fresh clock and run like that? Some drivers will. Some drivers won't. Some drivers mm-hmm. been, you know, once my 10, 11 hours is up, that's that. I'm done for the day. Some other drivers, they want to run. They want to burn the midnight oil. You. Yeah, I love burning the midnight oil. I love running. I'm going to use my whole clock. I'm going to use my 70-hour clock. I'm going to use my recap hours before I got to do a 34 reset, you know? Okay. Well, Mac Life, man, again, I, I honestly appreciate this, man. I'm, I'm sitting back and, yeah. and enjoying the conversation and listening to your experience with the company but let me ask you this before we get on up out of here because i know you i know you're busy and you're giving us a little bit of your time and i do appreciate it but uh when the railroad comes to a stop man and you lose that uh, that that great dispatcher that you got and you get put with with somebody that you're not gelling with are are you still going to try and continue to give super ego a chance until you get another good one or what will be the consensus after that i'm gonna say it like this bro i can't worry about what the end of the railroad looks like because i ain't got there yet but what i can do is take advantage of what i got now make the best of it there and get ready so i don't have to get ready if that time ever comes and if that time did come i'm confident enough in myself to say i know how to converse i know how to conversate with I'm going to stay ready so I don't have to get ready, bro, if it ever came to that point. All I could do is worry about now, take advantage of what I got, the best of it. I can't worry at the end of the road, even the end at the road point. Anybody that's worrying about, you know, if if, if that's going to come down the line, you looking too far ahead and not worrying about what's in front of you right now. That's how I look at it, bro. All right. Well, Matt Life, thank you very much for coming on, man, spending a little bit of time with the lockout men. I hope you guys out there. There, there, there you have it. There you have it. Another, I have another driver that been there a little while, uh, given his experience. Now, you guys do with that as y'all want in the comment section. I, I appreciate you coming on, uh, sharing your experience and everything, man. Thank you very much. Uh, you definitely stay safe out there and safe travels. I appreciate you having me on, bro. The run, the go, the back of tequila, I mix it all up and I swear that I need none of them in my pocket if it ain't about the wallet, none of them on my mind if it ain't about the time, none of them on my wrist if it ain't about the time, no ways, none of them, now we gon' be fine. Hey, there's so many battles, so my left and my right, hey, take a shot for all of your problems, we ain't worried about them tonight, it's called shot burning.